Okay, in this video, we're going to cover 10.5, which is the area and arc length and polar coordinates. Sorry, I was running up and down the hallways. <laughs> um, it says, write an integral that represents the area of the shaded region of the figure, but do not evaluate the integral, okay? And so this is going to kind of hit what I was referring to in class on um, Wednesday, November 16th, was that um, when I talked about how to find the bounds, I just started like taking this angle and taking pi over four and dividing by that angle. And it didn't really explain anything. And coincidentally, that worked for those problems. However, I owe you guys a better explanation as to why, not necessarily why it was pi over four, because I honestly do not know where that pi over four came from. I may have known back then, but looking at it now, a year or two later, I really don't know where that pi over four came from. Um, but what I can tell you is that uh, when we do this problem, for example, one, it will kind of help us figure out what's going on with the, with the next examples, okay? So what I want to do is I basically want to figure out the area of this region. So I know that there's got to be some function in here squared because the formula is um, A equals one half from A to B, and then whatever your R is squared and then D theta. So I know I'm going to have to have the one half since they don't have it out front, it's going to have to get included inside the, rad the radicand or integrand, okay? And they did tell me the bottom bound is zero, but where did that come from, right? And how do I find the top bound, okay? So here's what we do. And in order for us to get this point right here, okay, um, that would mean that our radius was going to need to be zero. And so we're basically solving this equation for theta so that we could find the bounds for theta. Then I have this value here, since this is the beginning of the shaded region, and then that's the end of the shaded region, there the radius is actually equal to eight. So I'm gonna set eight equal to eight sine of theta. And then when I solve here, I divide by eight. I'm just solving this equation. And then over on the other equation, I'm gonna divide by eight, but I get one. And so then if I wanna find the angle that gives me sine equal to zero, that would be when theta is equal to uh, regular unit circle when the y value zero is here and here. So it's zero plus pi k, again, where k is equal to zero, one, two, three, four. And when is it equal to one? That's here. So that's actually going to happen when theta equals pi over two plus two pi k, because it doesn't, the y value is not positive one until you go all the way around. Okay. So we have to have two pi k. Whereas here it's zero and then pi and then two pi, three pi, four pi there. Those answers are within pi units of each other, okay? Now they already actually took, um, yeah, they already took this one. They already, like if I let k, let k equals zero, then I get one answer as theta equals zero and theta equals, I would have pi over two plus nothing, which is just pi over two, okay? And so then when I get that, um, it does give me that lower, the lower bound zero, and I found the upper bound, which is one half, okay? So it's going from zero to one half. So I do know what would go up there, and it should be a pi over two. Since I already have the zero, and then it would be pi over two. And then in here, it should be r squared over two. So in my case, that would be um, eight sine of theta squared over two, which is 64 sine squared theta over two, which is actually 32 sine squared theta, okay? So in here, you would have 32 sine squared theta. Now they're not asking you to actually um, integrate it. They're just asking you what should go inside these boxes and that's it, okay? 
Um, however, for the next couple of examples, we do actually have to uh, find the area, okay? So it's definitely helpful to know how to, um, how to do this, okay? So for the next two problems that has to do with the petals of these, they're, they're called roses in polar coordinates, like back in pre-cal when you were graphing them. And they do one of two things. Um, they might have a whole bunch of petals, who knows? But the petals are usually like on the x-axis or they're like in the first quadrant somewhere, okay? Um, but notice something similar to regardless of where the petal is in the quadrant, notice that it starts at zero and then whether it goes this way or whether it goes that way, it stops at zero as well, okay? And so this is significant because this is how you know where the beginning of your petal starts and where the end of your petal starts. And you just have to do one petal. So you just need one interval from the first time it does it and then to the second time that it hits zero, okay? So when I go to figure out what the those angles should be in my formula, right? Because this is your formula. When I want to figure out what these theta should be, should be, essentially all I'm doing is taking this function and equaling it to zero so I can figure out where it's hitting that origin so that when it starts at the origin and then it comes back, it's made one whole petal, okay? Um, and so when I'm doing this, it would have to happen when cosine or when eight theta was equal to, let's see, cosine equals zero of the X. So that's pi over two and it happens every pi units right here and then here and so on and so forth. So pi K, again, K equaling zero, one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. But I have to divide everything by eight. So if I divide everybody by eight, I get that theta is pi over 16 plus pi over eight times K. Now, again, K equaling zero, one, two, three. Now I only need the first couple of thetas. So if I let K equal zero, that will give me the first one. And then I can let K equal to one and that will give me the very next theta, okay? And that's all I need is just two of those things to make one petal, right? Start at zero, end at zero. So if I let k equal uh, zero, then I'm just going to have pi over 16. If I let k equal to one, I have pi over 16 plus pi over eight, which is actually three pi over 16, okay? So these are going to be my bounds for my um, integral. So the first one happens at pi over 16 the second one at three pi over 16. And then R is cosine of eight theta squared d theta. So I'm actually gonna convert that since it is cosine squared. We have to use the power reducing formulas. Remember that from chapter eight. So this is gonna be one plus cosine of double the angle. So 16 theta over two. And I can kick this two out with the one half in the front and I will have um, this integral. And then if I want to integrate each term individually, I will get theta plus one over 16 sine of 16 theta, right? The derivative of this is cosine 16 theta multiplied by 16. So this would cancel that 16 and get me that one coefficient just going backwards, right, to check my integral. You could also use u substitution, and then that's where this one over 16 will come from. But I have to um, evaluate it at my bounds. So when I plug in three pi over 16, oops, I get sine, um, this 16 will get canceled with that 16, so I just have 3 pi. And then pi over 16 for theta plus 1 over 16 sine. Again, that 16 will cancel, and I'll just have sine of pi. Now, on the unit circle, um, if I look at the unit circle, um, pi, is he pi is here, and 3 pi is in the same spot, okay? Not over here. And in both of those cases, the y value there, because sine is your y value, the y value at that spot is zero. So this is zero and this is zero. So essentially I end up with one fourth 
3 pi over 16 minus pi over 16, which is 1 fourth of 2 pi over 16, which is actually equal to pi over 32. And so this is the area of that one petal. Pack on my paper too. There we go. So similarly, for example three, and this is another example, but I wanted to cover this one petal idea again because in the lecture videos, I discussed the points of intersection pretty good. That one, you know, you should be able to use to figure out the solutions to the last three web assign um, problems, right? So the discussion video has examples for the last three um, web assign assignments for 10.5. However, there are like a couple problems that have to do with the area. And I wanted to make sure I talked those out better than I did in the 10.5 discussion, OK? Um, because I didn't explain where those bounds came from satisfactory to myself right now, OK? So it must have been, I must have known what I was doing back then. But for some reason, I do not remember. And so I need to be able to explain it to you guys, OK? So the same idea is going to happen for this problem. It's just a sine problem versus a cosine problem, right? Here we were finding one petal of a cosine. And now we're going to be finding one petal of a sine, OK? So I did do one like this in the discussion video, but I'm going to do it again. And it may look a little bit different, but I'm going to explain where all the pieces are coming from, OK? So remember the idea of a petal. It doesn't matter if it's on the x-axis or if it's over here in the first quadrant for, for some reason. That first petal, any petal, has to start at the origin and then move out and then come back to the origin, OK? And the origin is always represented by the equation r equals 0, right? So we're basically just plugging in 0 for r and trying to figure out when that happens. So if I divide both sides by 8, I get this equation. And if I look at my unit circle, when is the y value equal to zero? Here and here. So that means that three theta would have to equal um, zero, which is the first one, plus pi k. It can also just say three theta equals pi k, right? You don't need to add zero to it. But zero is the first one, and then it's pi, and then two pi, three pi, four pi, so on and so forth. And k goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So I do have to figure out what theta is. If I divide both sides by 3, I'm just making sure I was recording. I don't know why I doubted it for a second. Um, I get pi over 3 times k. And so then to find out when that happens the first time, we're going to let k equal to 0, and then we'll let k equal to 1. So if I let k equal to 0, I have 0 times this, which is just 0. And if I let k equal to 1, I get pi over 3. So then I have those bounds, 0 and pi over 3. Now I'm just going to use the rest of the equation. So r squared d theta. And then we'll do the computation this time. So we get. Uh, 64 sine squared of 3 theta, d theta. Then we, um, I'm going to pull the 64 out. So half of 64 would be 32. And then I have sine squared of 3 theta, which I can use the power reducing formula. And it would be 1 minus cosine of double that angle. So 6 theta over 2. And I'm going to take out this denominator. But 32 divided by 2 is 16. OK. Now remember that the um, integral of 1 d theta is theta. The integral of um, cosine is negative sine. So this negative and then the negative sine will turn this into positive sine. But then because of the u sub, I actually have to divide by 1 over 6, the derivative of the angle. And I definitely need to evaluate it from 0 to pi over 3. 
So I'm going to have 16 pi over 3 plus 1 over 6 sine. Um, 6 times pi over 3 would give me 2 pi. And then minus 0 plus 1 over 6 sine. 6 times 0 is just 0. Now remember, the sine of 0 is 0, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. So these are gone. And I have 16 times pi over 3 minus 0, which is just 16 pi over 3. And so this is the area of one petal, OK? OK, and that is the last example. Again, if you want some examples of how to find the points of intersection, follow closely with the examples that are given in 10.5 discussion, because I think I covered two or three um, problems where you're finding the points of intersection, OK? Um, other than that, if you guys have any questions for me, um, just let me know. Just text me, remind. I will be available until I see you guys um, in person again or on Zoom again. Um, but just keep in mind that you can always text me. Just send me a picture of what you're working on. Send me a picture of whatever you've done so far or tried to do or thought to do. Um, and then we can go from there. And I'll be able to guide you through the problem. Okay. Um, but if you guys have any questions for me, please text me and let me know, and I will definitely reply and answer them. Um, other than that, you guys have a great day, and I will see you later.